organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Good morning, Iowa City, and welcome to today's edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Nikki Crossway, and due to technical problems, we will be doing our usual broadcast from YouTube today. We apologize for our changes to our program, but we'll be back up and running as usual with our live broadcast tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Now let's get to today's top stories. Longtime leader of Cuba, Fidel Castro, died this past Friday evening. The announcement was made by Fidel's brother, Raul, who at the time did not disclose a cause of death. The former leader's death has caused mixed reactions throughout Cuba, with many mourning the loss of their commander-in-chief, while others are relieved and hope that his, this allows for more relations between the United States and Cuba. This will largely depend on President-elect Donald Trump, who promised his campaign to undo recent openings in the U.S.'s relationship with Cuba. Speaking of Trump, a recent push for recounts of votes in a handful of states has him claiming that he would have won the popular vote for it weren't for millions of people voting illegally. Trump made his accusation in a series of tweets this past Sunday, but has yet to provide evidence to back his claims. The popular vote currently shows Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton with roughly 2 million votes more than Trump. Protesters standing at Rock Sioux Reservation in North Dakota have stated that they have no intention of leaving the site despite a government directive to do so. The protesters are staying in place to prevent an oil pipeline that they will believe damaged drinking water in the area and Native American cultural sites. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said in a letter to the protest leaders that the land will be closed to the public after December 5th due to safety concerns. An argument between two men in New Orleans escalated to a shootout that has left one victim dead and nine injured. The shootout interrupted holiday celebrations in New Orleans French Quarter, which was crowded with tourists at the time of the shooting. The suspects fled the scene immediately, but New Orleans police claim they have information that will hopefully lead to both of their arrest. Black Friday had plenty of shoppers venturing out for the best deals, but the numbers show that people are spending less than usual this year due to discounts. Down from nearly 3.5% from a year ago, this past holiday weekend, the customers look to have spent an average of $289.19 over the four-day weekend. From a survey by the National Retail Federation, more than 154 million customers said they plan to have shopped over the holiday weekend. This number compares to the 151 million customers a year ago. As Cyber Monday starts, it seems that people have been choosing the online route. 99.1 million consumers chose to do their shopping in the stores, while 108.5 million decided to take advantage of the online deals available over the holiday weekend. An Iowa City two-day BB gun shooting spree has led to charges for four, five teens. Excuse me. Last week, officers responded to about 35 criminal mischief reports involving BB guns over a 48-hour period. One person was shot and suffered a minor injury. Residents in East and Southeast Iowa City reported windows shot out of their vehicles and damages to their homes. Victims were able to provide police with suspect and vehicle descriptions. Saturday evening, police found a vehicle matching the witness's description near Breckenridge Trailer Court, 4494 Taft Avenue. Inside the vehicle, five teens ages 15 to 17 were found. BB guns were found inside the vehicle. The teens have brought in for questioning Police are waiting for the public to report all of the damages before pursuing additional charges. Megabus will no longer service the route from Omaha to Chicago as of January 10, 2017. The line has run for five years from Omaha to Chicago, with the Iowa City, Des Moines, and Davenport stops having been added to the 2015. Due to cut services, Megabus will offer discount buses on the Omaha-Chicago line until it ends on January 9, 2017. Megabus claimed the reason for cutting the line is customers preferring to drive or fly for transportation because of lower gas prices. Instead, Megabus is going to offer new stops in Wisconsin and Ohio. Tune into Thursday's show for more about the Megabus changes. The University of Iowa Athletic Department has announced their $5 million renovation plans for their Student Athlete Learning Center. Student athletes have been able to enjoy their free time at the Gurdon Athletic Center since 2003. The renovation plan's goal is to offer student athletes more spaces to study, eat, hang out, and socialize. To be able to implement this goal, they are going to add a group study rooms, a commons, and a cafe by 2018. 
With graduation around the corner and the Hawks wrapping up their football season, many students are going to be looking for ways to show their Hawkeye pride these last few weeks of the semester. We've got Daily Island TV's Azu with wit with where on how to show your school spirit. At the University of Iowa, one simple yet effective concept can become the difference between being at school and being at our school. Hawkeye Pride allows students to become a part of something different and exciting, to support and promote their fellow classmates and their team. Wearing your favorite Hawkeye gear around campus creates a bond between Iowa City residents, UI faculty, and fellow students. And for some students, it's somewhat nostalgic. I've always known the Hawkeyes, so if I wear their gear, I feel like I'm a part of them. Black and gold, that was my high school colors. Plus, I just feel the pride for Hawkeyes. Here on campus, that pride's not difficult to obtain with Hawks calendars, buttons, and three on-campus shops, there's no shortage of school spirit. Around game days, these Hawk shops see a ton of students buying gear to support their team. We see a lot of people coming in just trying to get like their Hawkeye stuff and like, um, just trying to support the team for the following game. School spirit is said to be one of the most defining aspects of campus culture. Here at the University of Iowa, more than 70,000 Hawkeye fans gather on game days and tens of thousands of students wear their favorite Hawkeye gear around campus. This spirit can lead to an increased overall college experience and create memories that will carry you through to graduation. This is Asia Witt, Daily Iowan TV. Happy Monday, Hawkeyes. Welcome to Daily Iowan TV Sports. I'm Ashlyn Bauer. And I'm Taylor Cassian. No one could have guessed that Iowa would cruise through November after an embarrassing showing at Penn State at the beginning of the month. But here we are and Iowa is back in the AP Top 25 at number 22 this week. Taylor Brooks tells us that one word got them through this track and it ended on the biggest note of all. Resilience is what has led Iowa to win their last three games and then routing Nebraska in their final regular season matchup. Just coming off of you know, a game against Penn State you know, where we didn't really you know, participate like we should have, but and then kind of putting that behind us and being a resilient team and coming back strong for the last three weeks of the season. What these guys have done, you know, day in and day out the past three weeks is just, uh, it's been really, uh, you know, amazing to watch. And we got knocked in the mouth against Penn State and then we came back and battled a you know, tough road ahead of us, but we came out and won three straight and, uh, you know, it's a credit to, to the team and, and it shows what, you know, what they're made of. The offense showed up just as much as the defense as C.J. Beathard threw three touchdown passes, including a 77-yard pass to fellow senior Riley McCarron for his third longest of his career. The defense played great, special teams played great, and we were moving the ball offensively, offensively, you know, put up 40 points. So um, you know, I think if you, you know, combine all the, you know, everything, every aspect of the game, I think we, we played as good as we have all year. It was a, a game plan play we had been working on, um, especially with the, all the running we've been doing, especially last week in Illinois. Uh, we thought we would catch them with a quick play action, you know, quick pass, um, and really just split the middle of the field. And it, honestly, it worked out perfectly, obviously. The exclamation point I will put on their season down the stretch couldn't have been done without the seniors. And the memories Friday were nothing short of the legacy this group's going to leave behind. Everything that I you know, dreamed it to be, um, you know, just run out there seeing my mom and I knew she was going to be crying and you know, just seeing her, you know, it was tears of joy. It's a great feeling, you know, to get your get the last win in Kenny as a senior. I mean, you know, this is what we worked all, all year for, you know, for moments like this. It was extremely rewarding. Um, I mean, after four and a half years of putting in work and time and dedication, those are the moments that you kind of live for. Um, you can't buy a feeling like that. Can't believe you know five years went by that fast, but um, you know it was the most fun five years of my life. The three and one record in November should carry the momentum into Iowa's bowl game here in about a month. Reporting for the last time with the Iowa Hawkeyes inside Kinnick Stadium, this has been Taylor Brooks, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Thanks for the memories, Kinnick. One senior who was not announced Saturday was wide receiver Matt Vandenberg. His foot injury early in the season led him to be sidelined. But in Iowa's eyes, they're really hoping he gets a red shirt. A huge asset to Iowa's big win against Nebraska on Friday was their defense. Katie Sextro tells us what clicked for this Iowa defense that's led them to be so successful lately. Iowa's defense has given up only 23 points during their last three games combined. When you compare that to the 41 points they allowed Penn State to score three weeks ago, it's pretty clear that something changed after November 5th. I mean, we either could have just you know, doing the towel and say, you know, season's over or just, you know, just keep pushing forward. And, you know, that, that was our mindset, you know, after Penn State going into Michigan. I mean, from this point on, we were just going to, you know, just keep making positive strides. Eventually when you have a string of 
a string of uh, games where you're not playing up to your potential, it, it gets really frustrating. I feel like you can either go up or you can go down from there. And fortunately, we went up. Uh, I don't know if we could have gone any lower than we did uh, three weeks ago. You know, we had a tough loss to open the month. But what, what these guys have done, you know, day in and day out the past three weeks is just, uh, it's been really, uh, you know, amazing to watch. And you know, I think what showed up tonight, we played great complimentary team football. Uh, the defense played strong three straight weeks in a row. And whether it was the excitement of another ranked team coming to Kinnick Senior Day or the last game of the season, the Iowa defense did not disappoint. It was just, just going out there, playing together. Pretty much, you know, just stand as a unit, doing what we have to do and just playing great Iowa team football and uh, just sticking to the basics, doing our job. You know, that's what we have to do, put our foot in the ground and just finish strong. Nebraska's run game was shut down on Friday and Tommy Armstrong in his past game struggled as well thanks to quite a few pass breakups from Josie Jewell, Josh Jackson and three others. The Iowa defense held the Huskers to only a field goal in the first half and a touchdown in the second. And it was by far enough to once again reclaim the Heroes Trophy. The whole defense line did a great job today, our tackles and our ends. So it was really just, you know, a good job by everybody up front, um, you know, taking the gaps away and, you know, moving people where they didn't want people. So it was a great job by them. Reporting for the last time with the Iowa Hawkeyes inside Kinnick Stadium, this has been Katie Sextro, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Throughout the last three games, the Iowa defense has allowed just 7.6 points per game. Tomorrow we will bring you a closer look at how Iowa's offense dominated against the Cornhuskers. In other men's sports, Iowa men's hoops was on the road over Thanksgiving break at the Emerald Coast Classic in Niceville, Florida. After number 9 Virginia swept the Hawkeyes 74-41 on Friday night, the team had a quick turnaround for their third place game against Memphis. It was a back and forth battle all throughout the game. Memphis pulled away with the victory 100-92, but made one individual made history in the Sunshine State. Peter Jock came away with 42 points in the game. This is the most points scored by a Hawkeye in 40 years. The senior also surpassed 1,000 career points with 4 minutes and 27 seconds left in the first half. Jock made eight three-pointers, just one away from the school single game record. He also came back to Iowa City as part of the all-tournament team. Iowa is back in action Tuesday night at, as, or at Notre Dame for an 8 p.m. tip-off. The Iowa volleyball team ended their season on Saturday. They played at number 14 ranked Michigan State. The Hawks fell to the Spartans three sets to one. It was also senior night for the Hawks where they celebrated four seniors. Alyssa Klosterman, Loxley Akiala, Lauren Brobes, and Ashley Mariani. Meet us right back here tomorrow where we take you through LaShawn Daniels Jr.'s 1,000 rushing yard season. Plus we check up on Iowa Powerhouse Wrestling. Nikki, back to you. Lastly, be sure to Pack your umbrella today as we, the weather forecast calls for scattered showers with a high of 52 and low of 35. That's all we have for you today on Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check out our website, dailyiowan.com, for all the latest news between now and Friday. And be sure to tune into our live program right here every weekday at 8.30 a.m. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm Nikki Crossway. Have a great day, Iowa City.